Right then guys, here I am for the second part in my 10 seasons of Australian Grand Prix video on F1 2019. A lot happened in the first 5 races which you can check out in the first part, but there is still plenty to talk about in these final 5 races. Firstly, let's mention how the already quite strange driver lineups got even further away from reality, as Russell finally entered Formula 1. I originally took a seat at Williams, but it doesn't matter because in the middle of the fifth season, George Russell joined Ferrari, with Charles Leclerc now at Renault. By this point in time, the Williams car was as quick as it could be, but still incredibly slow, relatively speaking, as almost every other team had also maxed out their cars. Racing Point and Ferrari found some room to improve from the fifth to sixth season. Red Bull did too, but it didn't stop them having the worst car on the grid by far. Mercedes are back on top, with Mercedes powered Racing Point second, and then former and future Mercedes engine team of McLaren in third. Even Renault are now ahead of Toro Rosso, but then again, Haas and Alfa Romeo have quicker cars than the formerly mighty Ferrari. Finally, in terms of driver changes, Sergio Perez has joined the coveted Mercedes team and takes on the tough job of being teammates to Lewis Hamilton. Ricardo went to Haas, Vettel to Renault, Albon and Sainz to Racing Point, and finally Kimi Raikkonen went back to Ferrari. This is now his third stint with the Scuderia, and let's not forget, his teammate is George Russell. My qualifying performance was pretty poor as I qualified in last, with Kubica in 17th. As I mentioned in the previous video, the AI do seem to improve as the career carries on. Hence the fact I used to beat Kubica easily and now it's the other way around. Also, in between the 5th and 6th Australian Grand Prix, I installed version 1.05, which updated the car performances. That explains why I went about 1.5 seconds quicker than I did last year, and the AI all went about 2 seconds a lap quicker. And with that, I'll let David Croft go through the rest of the qualifying results. An immense lap from Carlos Sainz yesterday puts him in pole position, and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Hulkenberg, Russell, Daniel Ricciardo, and Grosjean, Verstappen, Giovinazzi, Raikkonen, and Pierre Gasly. Norris, Vettel, Charles Leclerc, and Perez. Kvyat, Albon, Robert Kubica, and Valtteri Bottas. Magnussen, and Williams. And now, it's time to head down to the track. For the first time ever, my team recommended me to only pit once. I don't know whether it's the performance patch or the fact I've fitted even more upgrades since the previous race that's caused that change of heart, but at least it's a sign that the team's moving forward. We only need to pit once. My starts seem to be getting worse though compared to the AIs, but luckily the concertina effect allowed me to catch back up into the first corner. Then under braking for the third corner, I found a gap on the right hand side and broke later than everyone else. Even still, I only moved up to 17th place. A lot happened after that and lots of it directly affecting me. Charles Leclerc ended up forming a massive train of cars behind him and leaked places up until the point where I was next in line to pass him. If he had a car issue previously then, it was fixed in time for him to pull away and regain the positions he lost before I even had a crack at passing him. I could go into further detail about those laps, but since everyone involved was outside the points places and not even on the periphery of them, the details don't matter. What did matter was George Russell, in only his sixth race with Ferrari and his sixth Formula 1 race in total, overtook Nico Hülkenberg in a McLaren, and he started the move down into Turn 3 and finished it a couple of corners later. Then Valtteri Bottas in a Haas overtook me. Sounds odd that I'm talking about me and him in the same sentence, given how quick but unlucky he was last year and the fact his teammate was way further up the order. It's strange how Bottas underperformed in qualifying with that Haas, yet Ricardo overperformed. They were in no way the only team to have very surprising qualifying results, or the only team to have teammates who qualified poles apart. The difference with Haas was that I was able to overtake Bottas on the first lap. That's how badly Bottas did in quali. 
When Lewis Hamilton exited the pits, he came out in between the two Williams cars. The problem was that we were running very close to one another, and so Hamilton came out into the path of Kubica and took some of the pole's front wing off. It's unfortunate for the team, but I do have to thank Hamilton since that's the only reason Kubica didn't jump me in the pits. He got preferential treatment of coming in first, but replacing the wing took time that he couldn't recover, so I stayed ahead of him. George Russell was held up by me for a short time, but as soon as I gave him clear air, he lost the car slightly, going around the final corner, and that loss of momentum meant he was easy pickings for Max Verstappen. Sebastian Vettel from 6th place was the first and only driver to retire from the race. And with his teammate Leclerc away down the order, Vettel's retirement is a massive blow to Renault's point scoring potential. Meanwhile, up at the front, a very exciting three-way battle for second place involving Verstappen, Hamilton and Russell was heating up. Ultimately though, Verstappen was the quickest of the group, as he was fast enough to overtake Russell and then fast enough to catch up and overtake Lewis Hamilton. George Russell did exceptionally well in this race, to be in fourth given that Ferrari's car is the third worst on the grid and not that much better than Williams. Fourth place was miraculous, but third was a pipe dream as he struggled to keep up with Hamilton and plainly had a power disadvantage which would have made an overtake tricky to pull off. Carlos Sainz for Racing Point took an easy lights to flag victory and finished the race 5 seconds ahead of his former teammate Max Verstappen. With Lewis Hamilton in 3rd and 1 second back, and then George Russell in 4th and only a further 7 tenths behind. Hulkenberg, McLaren's top driver on version 1.04, but now the slower of the two with the performance update installed. He finished in 5th, with Kimi Raikkonen in 6th, which again is an amazing result given how rubbish that Ferrari car is, or certainly is meant to be. Daniel Ricciardo was Haas' highest finishing driver with Norris for Red Bull 8th, Magnussen for Toro Rosso 9th and Gasly in the other Red Bull 10th. This was the first race where everyone pitted only once, a sign that everyone has improved their car's tyre wear since the career began. The 7th season started very similarly to how the 6th season ended, only in as much as that every team had fitted every upgrade to their car by the end of the 6th season. So the pecking order for this season was no surprise and never changed. Red Bull, Mercedes, Racing Point and McLaren were the clear top 4 teams this year with all the other teams in their own separate distinct group. Ferrari still had the 8th best car whilst we had the worst and by a landslide. In terms of driver transfers, Hulkenberg and Bottas both rushed to get the two most desirable seats in F1 right now. That meant Red Bull's old drivers had to go to the teams Hulkenberg and Bottas were at previously. So that meant Pierre Gasly went to McLaren and Lando Norris to Haas. As always, Crofty will talk you through how qualifying played out. Sergio Perez on pole position today with Nico Hülkenberg alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Leclerc, Gasly, George Russell and Ricardo, Verstappen, Hamilton, Grosjean and Kimi Räikkönen, Magnussen, Sainz, Alexander Albon and Norris, Vettel, Kvyat, Antonio Giovinazzi and Valtteri Bottas, Kubica and Williams. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Charles Leclerc's start was exceptional, as he got the power down straight away and had no trouble in passing Hülkenberg. He even had a run on Perez in the Mercedes, but didn't have the space to try a lunge down the inside. Hülkenberg's start was so bad that he spent the majority of the first lap defending from Gasly. The Frenchman did back down in the end, but only after the pair of them fell far behind the top two. Daniel Ricciardo, now a Haas driver, had an even worse start, as Verstappen got the jump on him and then a few laps into the race, George Russell, in a worse car than Ricciardo's, passed him into the first corner, and then in the next braking zone, Carlos Sainz in the racing point overtook him. As if it couldn't get any worse for the Aussie at his home event, Lewis Hamilton then overtook him 
later in that same lap. Once an Alfa Romeo got past him, it gave away the fact Ricardo must have had some niggling little issue which I wasn't told about but plainly was harming his race pace. Honestly, that should have been everything there was to say about the race, but Perez and Gasly spiced it up by pitting for hards. No one's ever used hard tyres before in the Australian Grand Prix, so why they felt the need to for this race is a complete mystery. Before anyone had a chance to overtake them though, Max Verstappen retired from the race with a blown up engine. Sergio Perez lost the lead of the race to Charles Leclerc, who stuck with the usual approach of fitting the grippier medium tyres. Meanwhile, George Russell had the pace and power to overtake Pierre Gasly for fourth. Then both drivers were overtaken a second time, and in Perez's case, it was Nico Hülkenberg in the Red Bull who took second place away from him, whilst Perez's teammate Lewis Hamilton overtook Gasly for fifth place. It goes to show just how much slower the hard tyres are than the mediums. Grosjean's pace became quite intriguing as he fell into the clutches of his teammate, having started the race in ninth with the second worst car on the grid. At first I thought the game finally realised how slow Alfa Romeo's cars were and adjusted Grosjean's race pace accordingly, but then I started to think that he'd got another car issue as his teammate overtook him and I know for a fact Giovinazzi is not that quick in this game. Well, at the very least, not compared to his original teammate of Raikkonen. I was even able to overtake the Frenchman, and it wasn't my finest overtake ever, but Grosjean was so defenceless that it worked. It turned out he did have an issue with his car, as I was later told over the radio that it was fixed. Anyway, by the time it was mended, it was too little too late, and he ran out of time to catch back up to me and retake 17th place. Charles Leclerc won the Australian Grand Prix for Renault with Red Bull driver Nico Hülkenberg in second and Mercedes driver Sergio Perez, who should have easily won this race, only finished third due to fitting the hard tyres. George Russell, in a comparatively rubbish Ferrari, somehow finished in fourth and was the highest finishing Brit with Hamilton in fifth. Gasly finished lower down than he easily could have done but he still got 8 points under his belt. Kvyat, Raikkonen, Ricardo, and Albon rounded out the top 10, with Bottas recovering from his woeful qualifying performance to finish in 11th, having started the race in 18th, with the best car on the grid. Then again Leclerc won with his teammate Vettel in 13th, yet the Renault is only meant to be a midfield car, so in a way they averaged out to be about right since Leclerc outperformed the car and Vettel underperformed. Both Racing Point drivers disappointed since Albon scored 1 point and signs none, with only a 12th place finish, and the Racing Point car is meant to be the 3rd best, and basically on a par to Mercedes. Pretty much the only drivers that finished where they should've were the Alfa Romeos, even though Grosjean still somehow qualified in 9th. And Williams as I finished in 17th, and Kubica 19th, and as the final finisher. In between the opening rounds of the 7th and 8th seasons, Carlos Sainz and Nico Hülkenberg swapped teams. So Carlos Sainz raced for Red Bull from the Austrian Grand Prix onwards, and Nico Hülkenberg went to Racing Point. However, we won't see Hülkenberg driving a Racing Point car since he left them for Ferrari after only half a season. Albon and Hamilton are now teammates again and this time at McLaren, and Gasly and Russell now both drive for Racing Point. Finally, Max Verstappen is now a Mercedes driver. The rule changes destroyed the German team though as they currently have the slowest car on the grid. Ferraris is the second worst with Haas having the next best car and then Williams have the seventh best. Still ahead of us in ascending order are McLaren, Toro Rosso, Alfa Romeo, Renault who didn't lose any ground but are still behind Red Bull who did. And finally Racing Point preserved all of their upgrades and have the best car to show for it. As usual I'll leave it to Crofty to go through the starting grid.
An immense lap from Carlos Sainz yesterday puts him in pole position. And Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Gasly, Verstappen, Sebastian Vettel, and Norris, Magnussen, Hülkenberg, Leclerc, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Russell, Ricardo, Sergio Perez, and Hamilton, Raikkonen, Albon, Roman Grosjean, and Daniel Kvyat, Kubica, and Williams. The weather started off dry yet cloudy and was poised to get wetter as the race went on. At the start I was left in the dust of everyone else. I did however successfully overtake Kubica and Kvyat to put me into 18th. There isn't much else to talk about until the end of the 6th lap, when everyone piled into the pits for a set of intermediate tyres. Red Bull had the awkward situation of having their drivers in 1st and 2nd and running close together. So either one of them had to stay out for an extra lap and lose time out on track, or they double stack their drivers and the one second in the road loses time. They decided to pit both of their drivers together which should have meant Valtteri Bottas, who was second at the time, would lose out. But it was race leader Carlos Sainz who had no grip, under braking for the second to last corner and so he entered the pits behind his teammate. As such he ended up dropping down to 5th with Verstappen, Magnussen and Gasly all jumping him. That's how much the F1 world has changed. I'm talking about Kevin Magnussen in 3rd place with Toro Rosso and ahead of the dream partnership of Verstappen and Mercedes. This race was done on version 1.09 so after Codemasters fixed the AI being too slow in the wet but before they stopped them being too quick. As such, I wasn't expecting to achieve much versus the AI now the track's damp. However, my prospects were better than Albon's as he retired from the race as McLaren had another part fail on them during one of these Australian Grand Prix. Carlos Sainz's race went downhill fast as he had no pace for seemingly no reason. Sergio Perez in the Mercedes overtook him and then Sainz lost a bunch of positions in one go as the side by side battle between Sainz and Raikkonen ended with Sainz going into the gravel. There wasn't any contact but Raikkonen pressured Sainz to the edge of the tarmac. It was Sainz's decision entirely to drive off it and into the gravel which lost him even more time. Kevin Magnussen was doing exceptionally well with what is only the 5th best car on the grid, but all that skill went to waste as the car gave up on him and so the Dane lost what was looking to be a surefire podium finish. So Valtteri Bottas won the race and it was gifted to him by a mistake from his teammate over 20 laps ago. Pierre Gasly for Racing Point finished in 2nd and 7.5 seven and seconds down the road, with Max Verstappen for Mercedes finishing in 3rd and benefiting hugely from Magnussen's misfortune. Hülkenberg was Ferrari's best performing driver as he finished in 4th, with Norris in a stunning 5th. Haas's car is even worse than Williams and is the 8th best on the grid, so Norris's result is nothing short of miraculous. Leclerc for Renault crossed the line in 6th with Raikkonen 7th, Hamilton as McLaren's highest finisher in 8th and George Russell underperformed given that his teammate Gasly finished in 2nd and both of them drove the fastest car in Formula 1. I probably should explain just how on earth I finished in 13th and even Kvyat in 14th. Well that's because the intermediate to wet tyre crossover point fell at exactly the wrong time for some drivers. It still doesn't excuse the stupidity from the people and teams in question since we all knew it was raining and eventually going to be wet enough for the full wets. But for some reason Giovinazzi, Perez and Vettel all fitted on three sets of the intermediate tyres before a set of wet tyres. I don't know why they did it since none of them seemed to have any damage or crash at any point. But whatever the reason is, they all stopped four times when you only needed to do so twice. By the end of the season, every team maxed out their car again and since there were no rule changes for the ninth season, Red Bull still have the car to beat with Mercedes in second and Racing Point still somehow have a better car than Ferrari. From there downwards, the pecking order isn't dissimilar to how it was at the start of the very first season. Five drivers moved teams with Raikkonen making his way over to McLaren to partner up with Lewis Hamilton, which is one hell of a driver pairing. 
Albon took his seat at Ferrari whilst Russell, Sainz and Perez all traded places. So Russell is now driving for the team to beat, while Sainz is at Mercedes and Perez arguably lost out on the deal as he went to Racing Point, but even still they have the third best car around. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he starts from pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Sainz, Perez, Nico Hülkenberg and Gasly, Leclerc, Vettel, Russell and Kimi Raikkonen, Kvyat, Hamilton, Lando Norris and Ricardo. Giovinazzi, Grosjean, Kevin Magnussen and Williams, Albon and Robert Kavica takes the last spot on the grid and with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. As always, my start was horrendous compared to everyone else's but there's always a gap to slot your car into and recover some of the lost ground. In fact, my start was even better than that, as I re overtook Kubica after one corner, Albon after three, and I even passed Magnussen at the same corner. The Alfa Romeo drivers didn't give each other an inch, and it ended up costing Giovinazzi a position to me after he lost the battle with Grosjean. The leader of the race changed as Valtteri Bottas, driving for Red Bull, got a marginally better getaway than Verstappen did in the Mercedes, and so the Finn took the lead of the race after just one corner. The top two drivers pulled a bit of a gap over the rest of the pack, as Carlos Sainz, driving the same car that Verstappen is, couldn't keep up with him and dropped back. In fact, Sainz's pace was so poor that Perez overtook him on the outside of the slow speed turn 3, with no trouble at all. Much further down the grid, there was a mess of cars all scrapping for pointless positions, and contact was inevitable. Daniel Ricciardo, a Haas driver, rear-ended Danny Kvyat and chipped off a bit of his front wing. That started the Aussies' decline down the order and it's set to be another disappointing home race for Ricardo as even I overtook him. The other former Red Bull driver of Carlos Sainz had a similar lack of speed for whatever reason as Hülkenberg overtook him and Charles Leclerc in a Renault overtook him around the outside of the two left-hand turns in the final sector. That's not a part of the track where you can normally overtake someone and the fact he did shows something is wrong with Sainz's car which is meant to be the second quickest whereas Leclerc's is only the fifth best. Alexander Albon was one of a few drivers to pit earlier than expected. Leclerc and Perez were the other two to do so but they didn't gain or lose anything from their early stop. Albon's race did change and I'll explain exactly how in a little bit. Before the result of Albon's early stop was realised, the top two pitted, whilst miles ahead of everyone else. Crucially though, Max Verstappen in the Mercedes entered the pits behind Bottas in the Red Bull, just to make it confusing given how they originally raced for the other team. But Verstappen entered the pit lane behind Bottas and left it ahead of him. So the Red Bull pit crew let their driver down and cost Bottas the race lead. Shortly after everyone else pitted, Albon found himself in 10th. That's how effective the undercut was as before the pit phase, he was stuck behind me and now he's in contention for some points. His pace in clean air was so quick that he was within touching distance of once frontrunner Carlos Sainz. Conversely, Sainz's in lap was incredibly slow, hence how he fell down to 8th after the pit phase. A position which soon became ninth, as George Russell overtook him despite the supposed power deficit his car has got. Seconds later, Sainz dropped down another place as Albon hung his car around the outside of Sainz's at turn 3 and still got the job done. That battle was not put to bed though as they kept re-passing each other, but Sainz's pass in the final sector and then breaking for the second to last corner caught Albon off guard as he crashed into the back of him. It's only wing damage for the Thai driver, but it's enough to instantly reverse his progress through the order. A partially damaged Ferrari front wing is probably only slightly worse than a mint condition Williams wing, but luckily I also had a Mercedes engine on hand to overtake the Ferrari, albeit for only 14th. Kimi Raikkonen, now a McLaren driver, retired from the race with a blown up engine which promoted me up to 13th. 
he wasn't the only driver to retire as my teammate Robert Kubica also pulled off to the side of the track. Sainz's lack of pace alone didn't spell doom for Mercedes as Verstappen was still running well and in first. However, he ended up being overtaken by Valtteri Bottas, which isn't too much of a disappointment given that Red Bull have the fastest car. It then became apparent that something was wrong with Verstappen's car as Perez caught up and passed him in the fast turn 11 and 12 chicane. Nico Hülkenberg then overtook Verstappen at the same part of the track and on the final lap of the race. Then in a twist of fate, so predictable for a driver that famously has never finished on the podium in real life, he retired just two corners before the chequered flag. Hülkenberg smashed into the back of a near stationary Roman Grosjean and took off a wheel having just overtaken Verstappen for a coveted and deserved podium finish. To explain what Grosjean was doing, you need to rewind half a lap. He had minor front wing damage, but then he lost even more of the wing when he failed to adequately get out the way of race leader Bottas, and so both drivers ended with damage. The extent of the damage on Grosjean's car was enough to mean that he couldn't even complete the final sector without understeering into the gravel. He then rejoined the track and was lucky to miss Sergio Perez, but then he moved into the racing line in front of Hülkenberg before the German could slow down or move out of the way of the Alfa Romeo. It's a stupid series of events that cost Hülkenberg a podium finish, never mind 15 points for Ferrari. Grosjean's shocking driving didn't cost Bottas a race win, but had that happened earlier in the race, then it could well have done which shows just how damaging to other drivers and the integrity of the race result Grosjean's driving was. Sergio Perez finished in second and Verstappen was somehow simultaneously unlucky and lucky to have finished in third. Charles Leclerc beat his teammate Vettel to lead a Renault 4-5 with Russell for Red Bull in sixth, having suffered the consequences of qualifying seven places further down than his teammate. Norris for Haas bested signs in the Mercedes with Hamilton for McLaren and Gasly for Racing Point taking the final few points. Hülkenberg's retirement gave me a hollow 12th place and it really is hollow since I was lucky to beat him and Raikkonen who also retired. Even of those who finished, I only beat Ricardo and Albon because they sustained damage during the race. I could celebrate my 12th place finish but Realistically, I have very little right to be any higher than 16th. For the final season, there was a powertrain rule change, but I preserved all of Williams' upgrades. Every other team lost performance, and some more than others. Most notably, Mercedes had the best car and Racing Point the best of the rest. Alfa Romeo moved up to third place, a position they held very briefly this season. Williams had the 5th best car for this race, and pretty much only this race. Ferrari had a worse car than us, and McLaren had the slowest car of all. For the final season, Pierre Gasly joined Verstappen at Mercedes. Perez left Racing Point for Haas, and both Sainz and Norris left the old teams to reunite at Racing Point. Finally, Magnussen left Toro Rosso for Alfa Romeo to join back up with Grosjean and Lance Stroll took the final vacant seat, which was at Toro Rosso, meaning Antonio Giovinazzi has been forced out of Formula 1. Now, to answer your question, one of the biggest things is reliability. Formula 1 cars are full of very sophisticated but also very sensitive technology, and this first Grand Prix of the season is going to push them to the limits. So the most important thing today is to stay out of trouble, get to the end of the race and keep everything in good condition. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he starts from pole position with Pierre Gasly alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Hülkenberg, Sainz, Lando Norris and Perez, Russell, Leclerc, Vettel and Kevin Magnussen, Bottas, Ricardo, Alexander Albon, they've taken a grid penalty, and Kvyat, Rojan, Hamilton, Lance Stroll and Williams, Kubica and Kimi Raikkonen finishes off the grid. 
The start of the race played out in the same way it always does for me. I couldn't find any traction at the start and lost a position, but went adventurous on the brakes for the first proper braking zone, overtaking my teammate Stroll, Grosjean and even Lewis Hamilton in the McLaren. Who'd have thought at the start of this career mode I'd be saying that I'd overtook Lewis Hamilton in a McLaren? For the second race in a row, Verstappen pulled away from his teammate, except this time it was Gasly instead of Sainz, and this time Verstappen established a clear few second gap within one lap. Also very early into the race, Charles Leclerc, before we even had a chance to establish himself as a contender for the very top end positions, retired from the race after his car billowed smoke when going down the main straight. In a flurry of deja vu, the second Mercedes driver lacked race pace in what is meant to be one of, or this year in particular, the best car in F1. And so Pierre Gasly was overtaken by Hülkenberg in a Ferrari for second place, without any real fight. A short while later, both racing points passed him, so either he's got a car issue he's nursing, or being teammates with Verstappen is a curse that hurts your pace. Possibly both could be true. Sebastian Vettel in a Renault grazed the back of Perez's Haas. It wasn't a major crash and on first inspection, it seemed like both drivers got away with it, but Vettel did lose some of his front wing. Then Alexander Albon was unlucky enough to suffer a mechanical failure and end the race early. That's all I should have to say, but in the process of him pulling off and onto the runoff area, Vettel smashed into the back of him at a closing speed of probably over 100 miles an hour. Vettel somehow didn't retire, but he did have to enter the pit for a second time, and that meant his race was practically over. Lewis Hamilton, who was still behind me on track, believe it or not, overtook Grosjean into Turn 1 thanks to DRS. Daniel Ricciardo for Haas and Magnussen for Alfa Romeo were battling relentlessly in front of me, and it was that constant chopping and changing of positions that allowed me to catch up. Sure, the Alfa Romeo car was the third best and Haas the sixth best, and even worse than the Williams, but Magnussen was running on the hard tyres, which makes his rigid defence so impressive. Starting the final lap, the two of them were still side by side, and luckily the Mercedes engine in the back of the Williams had the grunt to overpower Ricardo's and even Magnussen's, so I moved up from 11th to 9th in a Williams. Daniel Ricciardo lost not one, but two positions in that final lap, as Hamilton was hot on my tail and catching me up, but ran out of laps to beat me or even score a point, as Magnussen still crossed the line ahead of him. At the front, Max Verstappen was completely unchallenged, and finished the race 17 seconds before Nico Hülkenberg for Ferrari did, with Lando Norris joining them on the podium as the leading racing point driver and probably the second quickest driver on the day. It's just that Hülkenberg beat him in the all-important qualifying session. Perez for Haas split the two drivers from his former team with 4th place, then Sainz in 5th and Gasly 35 seconds slower than his race winning teammate, with a Mercedes car that is meant to be the best one in Formula 1. Bottas and Russell made it a Red Bull 7-8, and Russell held the fastest lap, until Verstappen took it back off him on the final lap. I scored Williams first points in an Australian Grand Prix and this race represents half of my total career points. That's how fruitless my 10 year long career was. Hamilton and Verstappen may have been the heroes of the career as a whole, winning 7 of the 10 drivers championships between them, but the king of Albert Park was Valtteri Bottas. He won the most Australian Grand Prix with 3. Two were during the seasons he would go on to win the championship with Red Bull, and the other one was the very first race of the career before any major changes had a chance to happen. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this unique take on an all seasons of career save, and I'll see you guys sooner than you might expect for another all seasons of career mode video. But until then, I'll see you guys later.